Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Good day to all. I am Dr. Carmen Cita Padilla, one of the proponents of the newborn screening program in the Philippines. Join me in uncovering the wonderful story of newborn screening in our country. Together, let's zoom in on what makes NPS a comprehensive program for every Filipino here at Newborn Screening in Focus. To ensure that newborns are truly healthy, they must undergo newborn screening, a public health program that helps determine if a baby is born with one of the more than 20 congenital disorders. Its importance cannot be overemphasized. If any of the congenital disorders is left undetected and not managed immediately, it can lead to mental retardation and even death. It was integrated into the public health delivery system with the enactment of Republic Act 9288 or Newborn Screening Act of 2004. No part of PhilHealth's newborn care package, newborn screening is being offered in more than 7,000 hospitals and birthing centers nationwide. It has also saved thousands of children. This educational series is intended for health professionals who deliver services of the newborn screening program. Whether you're online or offline, this program aims to further enrich your knowledge in newborn screening and be able to apply the highest quality service to Filipinos, especially during challenging times. We will discuss the very process of newborn screening from the moment the baby is born and, and into the continuing care available for newborns found positive. We will also zero in on the features and management of each of the conditions included in the newborn screening panel. We will also interview patients as well as their parents. And in keeping up to the challenges, talk over how facilities and centers manage to give quality service despite the limits brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. This program is the newest educational platform for our newborn screening coordinators. One in every 7,200 health facilities throughout the country. We also hope that this series will also benefit the health professionals, physicians, nurses, midwives, med techs, nutritionists, as well as students in the various health professions. So take a seat, get comfortable, as you're in for quite an adventure here at Newborn Screening in Focus. Sila ay mga CAH patient na diagnose sila nung uh, uh, mga baby pa sila. Napaka halaga ng newborn screening kasi kung hindi na-detect ng napakaaga yung sakit ng mga anak ko, baka si Dave wala na to sa akin. Tsaka si Danica. Kasi magdadaan sila dun sa crisis na hindi mo alam kung ano yung sakit na hindi mo alam kung paano mo gagamutin yun then it will end to it will end to death sana pa newborn screening din kayo para wala nang complication paglaki para kung magka problema man madali na maagapan ako po ang kasalukuyang follow up head ng Region 3 Newborn Screening Continuity Clinic na matatagpuan po sa Jose B. Lingad Memorial General Hospital sa siyudad ng San Fernando sa probinsya po ng Pampanga. So, the most glaring would be we lack free medicines. Uh, it is an established strength of the continuity clinic that we provide the needed medicines for our patients. These are levothyroxine for our congenital hypothyroidism patients and uh, hydrocortisone for our congenital adrenal hyperplasia patients. However, for more than a year now, we are not able to do so because of procurement procedure uh, problems. Uh, number two, we are not able to get the requested laboratory procedures as scheduled. Uh, since most of our patients come from indigent families, uh, finan poor finances has always been a problem. More so now because of the added economic burden brought about by the pandemic. 
At the very start, uh, we make sure that we have the parents' commitment to adhere to the prescribed treatment of their children. Uh, we achieve this by providing continuing uh, family education as to the patient's disorder, explaining to them the illness of their children, uh, also especially uh, explaining the effects of adequate treatment versus not complying to the treatment. We also encourage the parents to ask us questions so we can directly address matters that are probably confusing to them or they do not fully understand. Uh, this is important because this would avoid the future problem of parents seeking answers elsewhere, especially for from non from persons with no medical background which is usually are the older relatives or even a neighbor probably haven't even heard of the disorder this would probably result into unfavorable most probably result into unfavorable outcomes in the long run for the patient most of our patients come from nearby provinces uh, aside from from travel expenses some would need half a day of tra travel just to get to the clinic in San Fernando. Uh, prior to the pandemic, we addressed this by scheduling the follow-up of patients who come from the same area on the same day. Uh, we also ask the assistance of either the LGU or the RHU to which the patient's household belong to if they can pro provide a free shuttle service for the patients to get, into the, to get to the clinic. Uh, at the moment, we are not experiencing this because we are relying heavily on telemedicine. Since the start of the pandemic, we have relied heavily on telemedicine. Uh, one of the major limitations of telemedicine is that we are not able to do the entirety of the physical examination. So during the consult, we rely heavily on the parents' observation of their children and also the information that they bring to the front. Uh, also, we ask feeding questions just to pinpoint possible health issues that the parents may have overlooked as not noteworthy. Welcome to the seventh episode of Newborn Screening in Focus, where we'll talk about congenital adrenal hyperplasia or CAH. CAH describes a group of autosomal recessive disorders of cortisol biosynthesis. It represents a continuous phenotypic spectrum with over 95% of all cases being caused by 21 hydroxylase deficiency. Infants with CAH may not appear ill at birth, but may experience a salt losing crisis within the first few weeks of life, which can lead to serious illness and death. This highlights the importance of newborn screening for early detection and management. Newborn screening for CAH was introduced in the late 1970s using a radioimmunoassay 17-hydroxyprogesterone or 17-OHP in red blood spots collected onto filter paper cards from infants soon after birth. And since then, Screening for CAH has been adopted in many countries, including the Philippines, since 1996. To educate us more about CAH, we invited two experts who have been studying this condition for a long time now. Here we have Dr. Silvia Estrada, a pediatric endocrinologist at various medical institutions, including the Manila Doctors Hospital and the Makati Medical Center. We also have Dr. Eva Maria Cotionco de La Paz, a clinical geneticist and executive director at the National Institutes of Health, UP Manila. Dr. Eva, Dr. Silvia, welcome to Newborn Screening in Focus. So Dr. Silvia, tell us uh, what we have to know about congenital adrenal hyperplasia or CAH. Congenital adrenal hyperplasia? as mentioned, or CAH, is a group of disorders of, that involve steroid synthesis. So they result because there is an enzyme block, an enzyme deficiency that prevents the whole metabolic pathway to proceed to produce the end products, which are 
cortisol, aldosterone, and on the third pathway, sex steroids or adrenal androgens. So there's a block and therefore you have a deficiency or you do not have enough cortisol, which is your hormone for sugar balance, aldosterone, which is your hormone for salt and water balance. And then on the last pathway, it is also the pathway that produces your adrenal androgens or your testosterone and dihydrotestosterone. Go ahead. Tell us more. You know, where do we find, where does this happen, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Sylvia? Okay. So maybe let's backtrack a little bit. San ba nang gagaling to? So yung um, adrenal glands natin, actually we have two. They sit on top of the kidneys, yung pato natin. And ang function po talaga nito is to make steroids. Two kinds, no? The adrenal gland is divided into two basic parts, what they call the medulla, yun yung pinakagitna, at saka yung labas, yung pinatawag natin na cortex. Sa CAH, ang involved dito yung cortex. And it produces, as I mentioned earlier, three types of hormones. Hormones that help us keep metabolically stable. Hormones that help us keep our water sugar, salt, balance, so that we feel good. When in times of stress, this adrenal gland becomes very active and it releases cortisol. So parang ibinabalik tayo sa balance. Diba? Sometimes when you're in some kind of stress, you, you, you just get so tired. So it is the adrenal gland that responds to this, um, this type of stress. So in CAH, ang problema is doon sa synthesis sa paggawa ng mga hormones sa outer cortex, yung pinatawag natin mineralocorticoid or aldosterone, yung atin glucocorticoid or cortisol, at saka dahil doon po kulang, napupunta po lahat ng mga precursor doon sa third pathway na gumagawa ng sobra-sobra po ng uh, sex steroids or adrenal androgens. So, I'll take it a step further. So, kung kulang yan, ang ginagawa, eh, nagsisend siya ngayon ng senya sa utak. Sasabihin niya, uy, kulang. Kulang ang aming cortisol. Kulang ang aming um, aldo- aldosterone. So, ang gagawa ngayon, doon sa utak natin, ang pituitary gland at saka yung ating hypothalamus magre-release ngayon ng senyas or tinatawag natin na chemical mediators. Magsesend sila ng senyas, yung adrenocorticotropic hormone, na siyang magsistimulate sa adrenal cortex para sana gawin niya. Iimpisahin na naman niya yung paggawa ng synthesis. Kaya lang, sa CAH, di ba may problema tayo sa enzyme? Specifically, in 90% of the cases, 21 hydroxidase, kulang. So kahit Senyas ng senyas si utak, uy, gumawa ka pa, hindi siya makaprogress, makaproceed doon sa pathway ng cortisol at mineral corticoid. So ngayon, ang, guma- ang ginagawa ng adrenal, lumalaki siya, kaya hyperplasia. Okay? Kaya congenital, present from birth, adrenal kasi doon nang gagal, nangyayari sa adrenal gland, hyperplasia, lumalaki yung adrenal gland dahil nga sa chronic stimulation galing sa utak in response to the body's cry for help. Wala kaming cortisol, wala kaming mineral corticoid, kaya senyas ng senyas, hindi naman makapagtuloy yung pagpagawa dahil po may enzyme deficiency. So, you know, Dr. Babo, this is interesting because, you know, usually we talk about the heart, the brain, the kidneys, but you're telling us the adrenal glands are equally as important as the other organs of the body. Most especially, it handles stress. So, you know, just like now, no, with all the stresses, are you saying that our adrenal glands are working really hard? Yes, I would think. And sometimes you're, you're not eating, right? But you're, you continue to be having energy. That's because your adrenal glands is working together with all the other hormones to provide the energy that we need. So in other words, the adrenal glands provides the balance in the body. And that's why we have to make sure that it's, it's normal. But that's in the case of CAH, as you have explained, um, because of the, the 
you know, all these hormones, all of, of the, the enzymes that are missing, uh, then we do have a problem. So, um, so can you just repeat again for our audience uh, a summary of what CAH, because I want them to remember this. Okay. Just again. Yes. I think since this is a newborn screening series, no? what we are picking up actually in the newborn screening program is um, CAH due to 21 hydroxylase deficiency, one of five or six hormones that are involved in the production of the hormones I was talking about. Okay? Pero siya yung pinaka madalas mangyari. 90 to 95% ng lahat ng CAH worldwide ay dahil dito sa 21 hydroxylase deficiency na hindi gumagana ng maayos. At um, so dahil doon, hindi nakakatuloy yung paggawa ng salt hormone, hindi nakakatuloy yung paggawa ng cortisol or the sugar balance hormone. At tuloy ang nangyayari dito, lahat ng ingredients, lahat ng precursor na dapat gumawa nitong dalawa, e eh napupunta doon sa third pathway. Tuloy, nagkakaroon ng oversupply ng adrenal androgens. Kaya ang mapapansin nyo, yun pong mga babae na merong congenital adrenal hyperplasia na dahil sa 21 hydroxylase deficiency, ang kanilang uh, genitalia ay nagiging atypical, ambiguous, hindi po hugas, uh, hindi po, it's not the same shape as, or it's not the same physical appearance as a regular female genitalia. And in males naman, dahil super sobra naman po yung mga, mga adrenal androgens or male hormones, nag advance po ang development ng kanilang physique especially their genitalia, kahit newborn pa lang sila, eh parang malaki-laki na po yung kanilang penis, maitim-itim na para kong nagiging early puberty. Thank you, Dr. Babu. So um, in addition to the ambiguous genitalia, can you uh, also share the other signs and symptoms of CAH? Yes. More important, which is why we do newborn screening, we want to detect it before they go into what we call adrenal crisis. So because they lack salt, they lack, lack cortisol, they will feel weak. They will fail to thrive. Kahit padede ka ng padede, hindi siya makadede ng maayos, matamlay siya dumede, o kung dedede man siya, eh susuka. Okay? So hindi siya lumalaki dahil nga hindi maayos ang metabolism niya. Hindi, hindi perfect. Hindi, hindi, it's not going well. So they will be have low blood sugar, they will have low salt, those who are salt wasters, and at the same time, because they do not have the, the proper proportion of this important um, sugar and electrolytes in their system, they become dehydrated and therefore they do not grow well. So, yun ang usual symptoms na nakikita natin sa untreated congenital adrenal hyperplasia. So the role of newborn screening now is really if we catch these babies early enough, then we can uh, actually uh, be supportive of the patient, treat them if, before the crisis sets in. And as you said, it's due to the imbalances that happens because of the, uh, the pathways in, in the hormones. So um, in, your, in your practice, uh, Dr. Sylvia, um, how many of the patients would be picked up by newborn screening, and how many would be coming in in crisis? Okay, the general worldwide incidence really of congenital adrenal hyperplasia is pegged at anywhere between one in 13,000 to one in 15,000. In our latest newborn screening data, it's about one in 20,000, na may CAH po. Now, there is a different kind of adrenal hyperplasia, which we call the non-classic, which is not what we picked up in newborn screening. Mas madalas po ito mangyari. This is about 1 in 1,000 1, or 1 in 1,500. No? So um, in, in our practice right now, we are very thankful that with newborn screening, we can pick them up early. We can prevent the crisis and we can guide them through their lives with appropriate treatment. 
So, so thank you, Dr. Babo, for emphasizing again the, the role of newborn screening. You see, we added this in the panel from day one of the program, actually, uh, more than about 25 years ago, because knowing the importance of early management, then, you know, we can make a difference in the life of the patient. Now, um, uh, let me ask uh, Dr. Ev a couple of questions on this genetics because we, do, we know that there are certain fa there are some families who have more than one child with congenital adrenal hyperplasia. So maybe Dr. Eva, this is the time. Maybe can you explain why is this happening that we have families with more than one child? Yes, a very important question, po, no? And uh, I'd like to say that this uh, the newborn screening program, yung mga atin pong nadadiagnose na cases of uh, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, they undergo po genetic counseling. And uh, this is the process of helping them understand and adapt to the medical, psychological, and familial implications of genetic contributions to disease. So tulad po ng natanong nyo, uh, Chancellor, tinatan uh, ito pa ay pwedeng nangyayari sa, sa, sa mga pamilya. So ang congenital adrenal hyperplasia results from mutations or changes in the gene that codes for one of the several enzymes responsible for making steroid hormones in the adrenal gland, which was uh, uh, described by Dr. Estrada. And uh, all forms po of congenital adrenal hyperplasia are inherited in an autosomal recessive manner. Uh, uh, that means, ang ibig sabihin po noon, pag sinabi natin inherited in an autosomal recessive manner, it is when uh, a baby inherits a gene that's not working well from each of uh, his or her parents. No? So, parent. so if an individual receives one norm, abnormal gene and one gene that uh, is not working well, then that person will only be a carrier of the disease, but usually we will not show any symptoms. So, ang importante pong mensahe dito, dalawang kopya ng genes ng baby na may congenital adrenal hyperplasia, I, I, they are not working well. And so the risk po for uh, two carrier parents, uh, if they have one copy of the gene that's not working well, the risk that they can pass it on to their children, whether it's a male or a female child, is 25% or one in four with each pregnancy. Uh, so which means if uh, a, a couple has had one child with affected with CAH, ang um, CAH, what we quote as a recurrence risk is 25% uh, uh, happening again with each pregnancy. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Eva. So if a, if a couple will have a baby with, uh, with uh, a, di a baby diagnosed with CAH, uh, do we automatically assume that the parents are carriers? That's a very good question. Yes, because the only way it can happen is that uh, one parent, uh, the, both parents are carriers of the gene that's not working well. However, there is a rare circumstance when a mutation can happen in a recessive gene, but that's uh, a very rare uh, uh, condition. More often than not, we assume that the parents are both carriers of the gene that's not working well. Okay. So, so if I can ask uh, Dr. Sylvia here, so I'm sure that you, you get these kinds of referrals, you know, um, patient in crisis and ambiguous genitalia and they're entertaining a CAH and you have your rundown of tests, okay, uh, the, the usual tests and I, I'd like you to, to, um, to mention them and then I asked Eva at the end, Dr. Eva, uh, where does genetics come in as a, on a diagnostic part? So maybe I will just start with uh, Dr. Sylvia now. If I have a patient in, in, in crisis and I'm entertaining um, uh, CAH, what are the usual things that you request for? Okay, uh, thank you for that question, Dr. Nanchit. So the first thing is you have to rule, you have to, and you're, this is undiagnosed, undiagnosed, okay. So CAA, um, in crisis, dehydrated, looking very weak, with low sugar, and I would of course take electrolytes, so glucose. If you can, they can afford cortisol, 
sodium, potassium, because these are the electrolytes involved in the steroid biosynthesis. And then definitely 17 hydroxy progesterone. Then because there's ambiguity of the genitalia, I would really put already an order, refer to genetics, and even before that, request for the karyotype analysis. Okay, so, so the problem in the Philippines is that you know, the tests that you mentioned are not automatically available in all of the hospitals. So maybe for our newborn screening coordinators who are here, if you get a patient who probably has an impending CEH, I'd like you to know that we are partnering with the pediatric endocrinologist in the country. And actually, Dr. Silvia was one of the past presidents. It is the Pediatric Endocrinology and Metabolism Metabolism Society, and I might again saying that. And <laughs> but but we need a an endocrinologist on board as soon as possible. And yeah. your newborn screening center uh, should be able to help you close the case because this is one of the important things that I keep stressing to our newborn screening facilities and uh, and to the coordinators that if you have you cannot have an open case because you, there is a long process for the care of that baby. And as, uh, as you've heard from Dr. Sylvia, ambiguous um, genitalia can mean many things, but the important thing now is that close the case and make the diagnosis. So if ever you heard the diagnosis, diagnostic labs uh, are not available in your hospital, your follow-up nurse and the newborn screening center should help you find a lab where you can send the sample. And I'll bring in again already the Department of Health that if, let's say, the resources are not available, the Department of Health should be able to help you. So those are the requests from the point of view of an endocrinologist. I'm going to ask Dr. Eva now, um, uh, because even in our algorithm for diagnosis, it's really more of a uh, the results that, that the test that Dr. Sylvia actually mentioned. Can you share with our viewers where genetic testing can come into the picture? Thank you for that uh, important question. Dr. Babu Estrada mentioned about karyotype. So in fact, uh, a cytogenetic analysis or chromosomal analysis is, a, is an important part of the testing process. So that's a genetic test. Uh, and uh, one of the important indications for doing a chromosomal analysis is when you see ambiguous genitalia. And also, of course, if you're entertaining congenital adrenal hyperplasia, because you'd like to establish the genetic sex of the individual. So uh, for our doctors and our nurses in the audience, uh, we, you have to remember that uh, our genetic sex is determined by chromosomes. And uh, we have uh, 23 pairs of chromosomes. The first pa uh, chromosome one to chromosome 22 are the same for males and females. Those are called your autosomes. While your last uh, pair, the 23rd pair is your sex chromosomes. And uh, we inherit one copy of the chromosome from the father and one copy of the chromosome from the mother. So a female uh, karyotype or a female uh, genetic, a, a person who is genetically female will have a 46XX phenotype, uh, karyotype, while a uh, male uh, will have a 46XY karyotype. So it's very important. This is one of the more important genetic tests uh, done for patients with CAH. Once the uh, um, diagnosis is uh, uh, established, using the parameters that Dr. Sylvia mentioned earlier, and then we also have the karyotype, we can do further tests uh, called uh, molecular diagnostic tests. So using DNA coming from the baby, uh, we can test for the mutations that may be present. So these are the changes in the uh, gene. Uh, Dr. Sylvia mentioned that the most a common type of congenital adrenal hyperplasia is the uh, 21 hydroxylase deficiency, which is caused by mutations in the C21A2, C21A2 gene. And uh, there is a way to check for mutations that are present in the 
uh, genes of the baby, uh, such as uh, the deletions, yung may parts of the DNA that's missing uh, in the gene that codes for the 21 hydroxylase enzyme. Uh, there are other there are other types of mutations like some typo errors also that can occur, and uh, that's a way to the, to confirm the diagnosis molecularly. Uh, so, so, so maybe um, you know what Dr. F is saying is that aside from the uh, tests that were mentioned by uh, Dr. Sylvia, the, the request for the chromosomal study is there to resolve the genetic test, but there really is there really is a panel of other molecular tests that can be done if you want to confirm the diagnosis. So in other words, in some cases, um, uh, it becomes a problematic case for us clinicians. And there is actually another test that can be done, which is molecular. Now, I know that I have several uh, newborn screening coordinators listening to us right now, but I want to inform you that when a patient, when a sample actually comes from your hospital and gets into the newborn screening center, there is an algorithm that the laboratory follows in terms <clears throat> of deciding whether it is a positive screen or a, uh, a negative screen. So in other words, that result is um, um, the numbers that come out from uh, the... Uh, the numbers that come out from uh, the, the, the testing uh, that has been guided also by the endocrinologist. So um, having said that, I first, before I go on into maybe more on the molecular part, but then um, I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Sylvia, what are issues about the baby that may affect the result of a newborn screening uh, of the newborn screening result of a patient with a possible CAH? Okay, I think um, very common here is that if a baby is premature, uh, more often than not, we might get a falsely elevated 17-hydroxyprogesterone, which is the, um, the uh, biomarker that we, the, um, marker that we're using to flag positive CAH. And that is the reason why uh, we do. We need to do a repeat testing for these babies at an older age, and I think our protocol calls for a repeat uh, test of the expanded newborn screening on the day twenty-eight, so that it can give us a better idea if truly this is a true positive or not. That's very important. Okay, so so the the, the age of gestation is so crucial for the lab to, to interpret the results. Are there any other issues that the, our coordinators need to understand? The other is the weight. Also a low birth weight will also cause sometimes a spuriously elevated 17-hydroxyprogesterone. So which is why sometimes I get questions from some of the coordinators or some of our colleagues why is it that this newborn screening is positive and it turns out negative later? Then we will have to just explain to them that there are really a few factors that can affect the result. It's not a perfect test, but at least it is a screen. So one of them is prematurity. The other is low birth weight. The other is a very, very sick baby can also give you an um, elevated 17-hydroxyprogesterone in an otherwise probably a non-CAH baby. What about steroids and the mother? Steroids and the mother depends on when the mother was taking it. So it may or may not affect it, uh, Dr. Padilla. Okay. So for example, somebody with asthma, um, yeah. depends on how long she's been taking it. it. I've not known it to really affect strictly the newborn screening result. Okay, so there were two things that Dr. Sylvia mentioned that you have to remember this is a screen. So in other words, it can give a red flag on a possible patient with CAH, does not diminish the, um, the, the role of the clinician in uh, you know, doing some workup. Even if the result is negative, you think that the patient really has a possible signs and symptoms, then you should proceed with your workup. Yes. And uh, the second point that uh, Dr. Sylvia actually emphasizes is that there are certain factors on the baby 
that may also affect the result. No? As you said, low birth weight, prematurity, and uh, what was the very other sick, one? Very sick baby. A very sick baby. Uh, as a whole, when you have a very sick baby, you know, all the organs are not really functioning as that well. And, uh, you know, we really repeat the, res- the, the test for that one. So um, those are the factors affecting that. So I'm going to ask now, Dr. Eva, because um, what, we've, what we have noticed, um, well, the problem, Dr. Eva and, and Dr. Sylvia, is that when the babies are not picked up we're not diagnosed immediately, they can die. So that is the problem that we are getting in our program. No? Uh, the role of the coordinator is so crucial. If you are a health professional hunting a baby, you've got to send that sample, have that sample sent to the lab because a delay of a few days, by the time we recall the patient, the patient can be dead. And that has happened actually in the program. So my question now to Dr. Eva is that, um, I mentioned earlier that I want the cases to be closed. So you, using genetics now, are we able to make a diagnosis on a baby uh, who had a positive screen uh, but was not able to have the, the battery of tests that Dr. Sylvia mentioned, Dr. Eva? Yes. In, in fact, uh, we have embarked in a research study that will determine um, the, if, if the baby who has died, uh, who unfortunately died and did not get the benefit of the testing, uh, uh, te- the tests that Dr. Sylvia mentioned, and yet the newborn screening was positive for CAH, we are uh, going back to those babies right now and checking whether they actually have mutations in the gene that is responsible for congenital adrenal hyperplasia. That is a way for us to close uh, the case, whether the death could be attributed to to CAH or or not. And and so um, we we hopefully we will have results of that study within the year because this will allow us to have a second tier testing for, for CAH that we can probably add to the algorithm using a molecular test, we can uh, help make the diagnosis after a positive CAH uh, newborn screen. Just to emphasize again, the urgency of timely sample collection and submission, because you heard uh, Dr. Sylvia saying that in the Philippines, it's roughly about one in 20,000. I suspect it's a little bit higher than that. But if you have 2 million babies in a year, then you can just imagine the number of CAH patients that we have in the country. So if you want to catch them in time for treatment, you've got to do this. Now, there is an effort on the part of the Newborn Screening Reference Center to to actually include a molecular testing as part of the algorithm. So the, the coordinators, I just want you to understand that the, the testing that we're doing in the lab right now uh, undergoes a, a regular review using the data that we have. But again, timely sample collection, timely submission so that we have a timely recall so that we can have a timely uh, management for the patient. So um, in terms of um, uh, treatment, maybe we can just uh, just cover very, you know, if we can just give an overview of how the patient will be managed. Uh, Dr. Sylvia, are they, do they have to be hospitalized or do they, can it be managed at home, if, especially if you caught it early in time? A very good question. So if they are not in crisis, they do not have to be hospitalized. We can actually just uh, instruct the mothers uh, very carefully that this baby should be on hydrocortisone, which is your cortisol replacement, and fludrocortisone, which is your mineralocorticoid replacement. And this is given to those who have the salt wasting type, meaning when you did your electrolytes, your sodium is low also. So they have what we call the classic salt wasting congenital adrenal hyperplasia. So they need two medicines, hydrocortisone and fludrocortisone and in infants plus salt tablets very important message dr silvia that if you're able to recall the patient on time the patient may not necessarily have 
to be admitted. So yes. you've got to come in at, because you don't like an admission as much as possible, especially now that we don't have, you know, we don't have uh, the luxury of beds in the hospital. So you've got to get that baby in time so that treatment can be given. So um, are there any other uh, parts of uh, any components in uh, uh, basic knowledge and CEH that you'd like to share with the group, uh, Dr. Sylvia? For um, us healthcare professionals, I think it's, it's important for all of us to be um, well-versed with at least the basic information so that even if you belong to the laboratory that's screening and with, and let's say you're the nurse in charge of the recall, you can also at least educate the mother. We need to bring your baby in so that we can confirm. And of course, the mother will say, eh, bakit? Wala naman siyang sintomas. Say, screening po ito. It's important because yun nga po, wala po talagang sintomas. So we need to bring it in. So I think by just be arming yourself with the basic information about congenital adrenal hyperplasia, you can help the mothers. The second is always ask when there's a positive result. Did you look at the genitalia? Kumusta po ang, ang private, ang penis ng bata? Kumusta po ang pepe ng bata? So that at least you have an idea. Because sometimes they forget to put that information in the newborn screening card. So you would have educated them indirectly to be looking at the genitalia and at the same time extracting important information from the referring newborn screening facility. Education is so important. And actually, I just want to inform our viewers that we do have um, fact sheets at the website uh, wherein if you have a patient positive for any of the conditions, we have fact sheets to guide you on the basic information. You don't have to be a specialist. And as you can see, the Dr. Sylvia said, arm yourself with correct information. It doesn't have to be so complicated, but at least an understanding of the condition because our patients ask us, okay? If you are the attending physician, if you're the attending pediatrician, if you're a family friend who's a doctor, you're, you're the patient or the rather the parent will ask you, what is CAH? So the Newborn Screening Center actually together with the specialists have come up with fact sheets so that you can more be more informed when responding to the patient. And uh, most importantly, you know, this is something that we, I'm glad that you mentioned that, uh, have we really looked at the genitalia, uh, you know, especially when you get a positive screen. And uh, Dr. Sylvia and I, in the past 25 years, can give you a lot of uh, stories on patients who have been given the wrong sex, who are patients who have been normal and have been uh, advice to the go to hospital if with an impending crisis we've got we can probably come up with the book just talking about you know the many stories that we've encountered but at the end of the day i go back to the best basic message to our audience timely sample collection timely submission timely recall and then timely management and if you just uh, you know follow that then of course these patients even if they have ch do not necessarily have to be hospitalized so uh, on the part of genetics, is there anything else you'd like to add, uh, Dr. Eva? During the counseling session, often parents will share their guilt that uh, there was something they did during their pregnancy that caused this to happen. And so it is important to emphasize to the parents that there's nothing they did or did not do that caused this condition to happen. Uh, we cannot choose our genes. These are passed on to us from one generation to the next uh, within a family. So it is, uh, I think, very, uh, it's, it's a vital information to convey to the parents that though we cannot uh, change our genes, we will be able to detect this condition such as congenital adrenal hyperplasia early enough. And they can say this, uh, the newborn screening program uh, can save babies from death and can allow, can allow these children to live productive lives. Thank you, Dr. Evan. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sylvia. Uh, just a final message to our viewers. I'll start with Dr. Sylvia. Again, I will really emphasize a positive newborn screening must really be confirmed. A positive CAH, you have to recall that baby timely and push for the confirmatory. If confirmed, treat early. 
and assemble your team if there is ambiguous genitalia. And do education, re-education, and make sure that there is regular follow-up from newborn period to childhood to adolescence and endorse them properly to the adult service as at the time that it is needed. Thank you, Dr. Silvia. Uh, Dr. Eva, final message to our viewers. Uh, thank you, Chancellor. I think it's, it's important uh, that uh, our uh, healthcare providers, our newborn screening coordinators, emphasize to the families that um, these are, uh, it's important to have the right information, uh, uh, enough uh, knowledge about the condition, how it's inherited, so that uh, they can um, address. Uh, the problems of their child uh, in a timely manner, and as well as plan for subsequent pregnancies so they can have uh, informed medical decisions. Uh, this is not a, a curse. It's something that, uh, that can happen to any family, but then um, it's, uh, it's something that could be addressed. And with, uh, with early detection and management, uh, the, this babies can be saved and uh, can have long lives. Thank you very much to our panelists for our lively discussion on genetics and the overview on the short-term management of CAH. Dr. Silvia Estrada gave an overview on the pathophysiology of CAH, as well as the role of newborn screening, confirmatory testing, and timely and adequate management. Dr. Eva explained the genetics of CAH being an autosomal recessive disorder, implying that the parents are carriers of the gene for CAH. Dr. Eva also gave the role of molecular testing in the diagnosis of CAH. We have very important messages. Dr. Silvia stressed the importance of education on the part of the health workers. The health workers must have enough information about CAH even before they meet the patient. NSRC or the Newborn Screening Reference Center has fact sheets the website to assist the health worker. Our second message is the importance of forming a multidisciplinary team in the management of CAH. It is a lifetime condition and care is from birth to childhood, adolescence, and adulthood. Dr. Eva stressed the importance of genetic counseling since there is a big chance of subsequent pregnancies with babies also with CAH. The genetic counselors help the parents understand that it is not their fault. Both endocrinology and genetics are partner fields in the total understanding of CAH. And once again, thank you to Dr. Sylvia and Dr. Eva. We are excited to see you again next week as we further discuss the long-term management of the CEH, including their psychosocial and psychosexual issues. To our virtual audience, please send us your comments, questions, or the list of topics that you want us to cover in our succeeding episodes. Email us at info at newbornscreening.ph or, or you may tweet us at newborn screen ph you may include the hashtag hashtag enbsph before we end i want to again take this opportunity to present to you the new addition to our tools in learning our enbs mobile app the enbs mobile app is a one-stop hub for all nbs health workers on everything they need to know about newborn screening it also features a rewards program that our health workers can use to earn points and use it to claim shop vouchers with our partners. If you have already downloaded the app, answer the quiz that we will send to your inbox to earn those points. We continue to improve our services as deemed necessary by the emerging challenges through an open dialogue about our experiences in newborn screening. It is our hope that through this video series, we extend the sharing of knowledge with greater reach, empower our frontliners, improve connectivity with newborn screening coordinators, and most importantly, provide unparalleled service 
to every Filipino. That wraps up our discussion for the features and short-term management of congenital adrenal hyperplasia. We are excited to see you again next week as we further elucidate on the long-term management of CAH, including their psychosocial and psychosexual issues. This and more here in newborn screening in focus. Nothing is more precious than seeing a child grow healthy and normal. Let's realize this through newborn screening. Newborn screening is a gift of life. Sa kalusot